the API test tool itself is in uh, VPP, uh, whoops, hey, oh, uh, I did it again. I test API. Um, Here's the test tool's main routine. Um, this is of some, this this uh, program is of interest as an example of how to hook up to the data plane and send it uh, binary API messages. There's a library call that says connect. Um, Thirty two is the is the uh, is the inbound uh, queue length. Not too important, you know, until until and unless you're seeing that you actually have your control plane client blocked for a period of time there's no reason to bother fiddling with it and again this is all this is all pretty much uh, you know pretty much boilerplateable uh, for okay yeah and here's an example of format where you say I've, I've made myself a hash table um, I want to go say okay go find me the error string and go print it um, main routine we'll probably look at very briefly because again most people aren't going to need to fool with this thing oh yeah this tool also exists to make uh, uh, a JSON version of itself so that you can send JSON uh, you know JSON encapsulated uh, API uh, messages particularly for testing Dave, Dave Wallace will get into this and he'll probably do a better uh, version of explaining it than I am but what you end up doing is you uh, open a file, possibly open, sta open standard in, um, go again, make the plugin API show up, init all the plugins, yada, yada, yada. And then um, do one file effectively is going to uh, sit in a loop. You know, sit. You know, sit in a nice one, while one loop. I, I, you know, I like set jump long jump. So I'll sit here in a while one loop, uh, printing out, uh, printing out prompts. As you probably saw, the API test tool has a has an exec mode. Did I show people that or not? Maybe I didn't. At any rate, if in the API test tool you type exec, uh, you can sit and then just type debug CLI commands as opposed to typing API commands prefaced by the word um, exec. Um, and what this guy's going to do? Oh yeah, the API test tool itself has a macro, you know, has a macro expander. A typical thing you can do for testing is to say, okay, I have an API trace from my test bed that exercises a feature the way the real control, control plane does. I'll make a script out of it, and then I'll say, oh yeah, well, every test bed's a little different. Let me go say, okay, this is the first interface IP address. I, I go turn those into macros. I make a little file that describes the test bed, and then I um, I include it in you know the body of a test. So you've just made uh, the test that you've uh, you know that you've scripted be uh, you know more platform independent. Mr. Wallace will give you more on this, but at any rate, the the hundred thousand foot take you know take you know the takeout menu item here is that the API test tool has a macro evaluator. It's recursive too, so that you can do as much as you like. I mean, obviously. Uh, it's not real smart about uh, recursive macro definitions. Like, if uh, how would you put it? it? It's not M4. It's not the full the full Megillah, but it's way enough to be useful if you feel like playing with it. And it does some parsing, yada yada yada. Uh, goes and sees if the function, uh, you know, if the uh, uh, the function you told it to call is actually known to it. And in which case, it'll go off and uh, you know go off and actually get there. The API test tool um, is mostly this file API format.c, which is the epic catalog of pretty much everything it knows how to do. Let's see. Um, interface address. OK. Uh, you need to look through. The, uh, uh, what am I typing wrong? Oh. Adel address. Let's go look at the actual guts of it. So here's the guy where you're saying I want to I want to add, delete, or delete all of the addresses on a particular interface. You know, a bunch of unformats to go get the details, um, a bunch of sanity checking, constructing the API message, throwing it off, you know, throwing it over the fence and waiting for good or bad news. Almost all of these can be, uh, when, you know, once you're, you know, once you're in the rhythm of building these, you can build up uh, a binary API. Uh, you know, you can build up debug CLI binary API in the data plane, and 
a custom dumper in the data plane and this stuff, uh, you know, I'm going to say for a simple API that has one or two messages, you know, you might be looking at a half an hour's work, you know, to have it, you know, from soup to nuts, you know, start to finish and actually it'll work pretty much the first time. Of course, I've done 600 of them, so I can probably, uh, I, I can safely say that my warped sense of humor exists in all of this stuff. But at any rate, um, okay, yeah, thanks, Quinn. Um, so this is the, the, the API test tool, you know, uh, main line. And, you know, back to Mr. Plugin here, um, max swap test dot C. Back to Mr. Plugin. Again, there's a certain regularity to it where you're hooking up the API. It's, a, oh yeah, by the way, the API message handling um, is done in a library that we may get to look at, but probably won't later in the day. And both the client and, both the client and the, uh, you know, quotation finger server for that stuff uses exactly the same code. Um, all of it's traceable at either end. We typically don't do that. You typically only really care about tracing in the tracing uh, tracing the API traffic in the in in the in the data plane. Um, surprise, surprise, surprise! As I said, there was a plugin register guy uh, on the data plane side. Well, here's the control plane side that basically says, uh, "Please, you know, please, Mister, uh, uh, you know, Mister API, uh, go get me, you know, go get me the first plug-in message ID so that my brain and your brain are in sync. In other words, data plane, you know, the data plane will end up inherently starting first because nobody will talk to a control plane client until the data plane's going. Um, the data plane plugins go program it to know MaxSwap under magic CRC, that API, and now the control plane comes in and cuddles up to it and says, oh, you want me to send 254, whatever the magic number was in the tables. Okay, fine, I'm on it. And that's, that's how the, uh, you, know, you can have sets of plugins for both the control plane and data plane that exist at the same time uh, that have a nice orderly message handling scheme. The stuff, again, it's really not complicated if you follow the pattern. If you insist on doing it from, I, I mean, it took me, you know, I'm going to say days to get this exactly to work crisply right. On the other hand, at this point, it's, oh yeah, that's where it is. Splat it down and you're off to the races.